This is a botanical garden. It has seven specialty gardens within the main garden. It was established in the early 50s to honor Royal James Roy Wilmot, a horticulturist whose special interest was the classification and to some extent the propagation of camellias. He joined the UF Experimental Research Unit in IFAS back in the mid-30s. He unfortunately passed away unexpectedly in 1950. The Gainesville Men's Garden Club took on the cause to create a garden for him. Well, it was principally a camellia and azalea garden. The gardens really deteriorated. The university said they could no longer maintain a specialty garden. A group of us uh, from the College of Medicine decided that we needed to restore these gardens. They were the only remaining green space on the Health Science Center campus. The last 20 some years we were able to build the greenhouse. We were able to create the conference center. It was an old IFAS building. We were were able to renovate it. Also did the walking track that we received funds from the Center for Aging. And we did the Memorial Pond area. Now we're getting ready to create the uh, big J and Eve Wilder Horticultural Garden. When you come into the garden, you see individuals who are here who are relaxing. And gardens have been shown to decrease stress in people, anxiety. It's a natural oasis. It's away from the concrete structures, the buildings that we all live in. This greenhouse is dedicated to therapeutic horticulture. The activities that we do depend a little bit on the particular needs of the group. So if we're working with a group of people affected by cancer, our activity emphasis might be a little bit different than if we're working with people recovering from stroke. So we're using horticulture activities as a way to emphasize maybe increasing physical function, increasing social skills, behavioral issues, fine and gross motor skills, all different kinds of things depending on the particular need of that group. This garden is open seven days a week uh, from sunrise to sunset, 365 days uh, a year. It's free. The garden started a work program training for adults on the autism spectrum. It became clear that we could do more than just simply show them how to do some of the horticultural activities. We could train them to acquire a professional credential. So we partnered with FNGLA. They offered a training program called Certified Horticultural Professional. Most of them were able to pass the examination associated with the certification. Several of them were able to be employed in the green industries, nurseries and grower operations. We have two plant sales every year. We've had one in the fall and one in the spring. It's really important to help us do what we do here in the gardens. Usually half of the proceeds go towards supporting our therapeutic horticulture program and the groups that we run, and the other half goes to taking care of these gardens. We get hundreds of people that come to the sales. Some people like to pre purchase things like the beautiful camellia cultivars or azaleas. They generally have a good selection of both. Indoor plants raised for a little while in the greenhouse, including some ferns, succulents, and small house plants. People flock here for those sales. So we're always looking for volunteers. The only way this garden stays looking the way it is, if you want to give anything back to the university, give some time. It doesn't take much and believe me, you'll feel better. You want to get some of that stress out of there, go and pull weeds, you know, you're getting rid of them, but you're also making something look beautiful. People's demeanor changes when they come here. They relax, they take their time as they walk through. We've changed it quite a bit, added several gardens, which is major work. A lot of machinery, digging, resoiling, removing old things. At least three new garden areas since I've been here eight years. I think the green spaces on campus say a lot about the community here and the fact that there's so many student volunteers that choose to spend their time here says a lot about how we view the environment on campus. And I think it's a really great opportunity having this so close to the Cancer Treatment Center. It just allows people to kind of have a safe space that's away from all the industrial stuff around here. It's just a really nice place to be. A lot of what we do is weeding, just picking up limbs and fallen debris, those types of things, clearing the walkways. It's just rewarding when you finish your work and you look at what you've done and the impact it's had on this space, knowing you helped make that happen. The students really appreciate it. Faculty, staff, people who walk through, even patients, they walk through and appreciate the peaceful space. The volunteers are very important. We are always looking for partnerships. We're always looking for donations. Those are really what helps support the gardens and 
and allows us to enhance them and make them better. You could go to the website and it's wilmotgardens.med.ufl.edu. Find um, how to donate, how to support the gardens, how to volunteer, upcoming events, plant sales that we have. Donations to the garden are critical. That is how we operate the gardens, that's how we do the projects that we provide for the patients, student, faculty. Without donations from um, generous donors and associations, we would not be here. We would not have the Camellia Walk and all the future working gardens really want to be able to operate the facility and the gardens for the long term. Now that we have this gem on the campus, we do want to preserve it for future generations.